Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Vaughn with CCM and I am here today with our very special guest, Lecrae. Now, Lecrae has had a busy fall, as you all know. He currently has a brand new book out called I Am Restored. Please go get this book, it is so good. And then he has a new album out called Restoration and he has a documentary that's on YouTube right now called The Road to Restoration. So I'm sensing a theme there. And we are so excited to have Lecrae here with us today. Hi Lecrae, how are you? Wonderful, thanks for having me, glad to be here. Good, now I saw that you have been working really hard in Atlanta through all of this time that we have been down because of COVID, making sure homeless have masks. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Yeah, yeah, masks and hand washing stations, uh, okay. just making sure that they're taken care of in general. Mm -hmm. um, it came about just after the, the news of the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. I found myself concerned uh, about myself. And then I thought, if I'm worried about me, what about people who don't have the means to take care of themselves? You know, I was going to the grocery store, stocking up on stuff, and I just thought, oh, goodness, I have the capability to do this, but what about those who don't? Mm -hmm. And I reached out to a good friend of mine uh, who works um, exclusively with people experiencing homelessness, Terrence Lester and Love Beyond Walls, and, mm -hmm. and I asked him, what could I do? And um, he had a couple of, of brilliant ideas and, uh, you know, without the resources for those ideas. And so we just partnered up and um, I helped, you know, bring some of the resources together for there to be uh, hand washing stations, masks, meals uh, for people uh, initially across Atlanta and then across the, the, the country and the world. That's wonderful. And to the least of these. Sure, absolutely. Yes. So you have written this book, I Am Restored, from a place of, you can hit rock bottom within yourself. You, know, you were at the height of your career, the height of, of success in the world's eyes, and you woke up one morning, hit depression head on. Mm -hmm. Why this book now? Yeah, I think um, after just years of therapy, Mm -hmm. um, I felt a new type of freedom, a new type of vantage point um, where I knew myself. You know, oftentimes we, you become uh, a Christian and you think all is well and everything is, is good, but there's still historical things that you haven't dealt with that you didn't even know you needed to deal with. Right. And so only part of the story can be told. Um, and, uh, and I think that part of the story had never been told. And I wanted to, I wanted to, to share it because I know when I listen to other people tell their stories, um, it serves me well. And so I wanted to, uh, to serve other people well in, in my journey as well. So in this book, you show people that God will use those broken pieces. How hard was it for you to hand those broken pieces over to him and let him start the healing process? Yeah, it was, it was very hard. I mean, for one, you're a leader. You are, you're supposed to have it all together. So um, the thought that you need help um, just really doesn't doesn't come to mind. You think you've already seen all the answers, and there's no one who can really help you better than yourself. Um, and it's it's a form of spiritual pride. And so for me, um, God just had to corner me. You know, He had to corner me and allow me to recognize that I don't have it all figured out, that I don't have it all together, and that there's some layers and levels that um, I don't have answers for, and I'm going to have to hand this over to Him. Yeah. In your documentary, you talk about restoring your late father-in-law's Chevy from the 1930s. And I love what you said that, you know, it's a metaphor for life in the fact that we have to restore the inside before we can restore the outside. How do we show people who kind of see Christians as, oh, well, Christians, everything's easy. Everything should be easy. God made everything easy for you. And that's definitely not true for any of us. Um, how do we show them our scars, our brokenness, and that God will take that mess that we are and make it into something beautiful? He won't waste our pain. Yeah, I think a lot of times what we do is we tend to make everything uh, kind of mystical. And we'll say, you know, um, God did it. We don't exactly explain what that looks like or how or, or the process for that. And so I wanted to help people understand the process. You know, it's that old adage where it's like I prayed, I was stranded in a flood and, and I prayed that God would send me help. And a boat came and I said, no, I'm waiting on God. And, a, a, you know, a helicopter came. I said, no, I'm waiting on God. And, and then you drown and you get to heaven. You say, God, I was waiting on you. And God says, I sent you a boat. I sent you a helicopter. Why didn't you take them? Um, and so for me, I want to give people tangible examples. Um, for me, God showed up 
in the form of a therapist. For me, God showed up in the form of uh, a nutritionist and, and just looking at different aspects of my life differently. And so, um, so we don't have it all together. We, we need some of the same means when we pray. Uh, sometimes God does work miracles, but, but, but most of the time God works, he does supernatural things through the natural. And, um, and that's what I want people to be able to see. Yeah. We are at a time, it seems like nationwide, we are more divided than ever, more at odds than ever. How do we use the grace that God gives us to restore, to help build that process when it seems insurmountable right now? Yeah, I mean, a large part of that is, is, um, is being relational, um, is, is developing real relationships where, um, where you need people, um, particularly in societies where there's a dominant culture and minority cultures. The dominant culture can thrive without needing uh, the minority cultures. And so um, my challenge to anyone in a dominant culture is to put yourself in a position of need, uh, where you need people who don't look like you, who who don't have what you have. Um, and that may be in a, in a form of leadership. That may be, maybe it's a doctor, a dentist, or it's a friendship. Um, but as a, as a Christian, uh, we're supposed to be a body. And a body is not just a cluster of neighbors who hang out every so often. A body is a, a, an organism that needs one another. And, and if we don't need one another, um, then we're not gonna experience the unity right. and, um, and, and, and the, the, the love that we're, we're built to experience. I love when you talk about in your book how through all of the the working on yourself with God, you changed how you viewed the Bible and you changed how um, you processed it. And you saw that God used these unbelievably broken people that society would never think that they could ever be used for anything great. And God changed the world with them. And um, even to the point there's a, you know, Rahab, the prostitute is in the line of Jesus and it, she's important enough that she's in the lineage in the new Testament. How did that come about for you? Yeah, that, um, just a lot of different studying, you know, and, and just in my time, just trying to hear from different thinkers and believers, obviously going to Israel and going to uh, the Eastern world, uh, helped me understand that, that for them, you know, oftentimes, we want to know how and why as Western thinkers, but Eastern thinkers want to know, or we want to know how and what they want to know why. And they're, they're constantly asking why, you know, we, we, we typically wouldn't ask why Rahab is in that lineage. We just say, Oh, look, Rahab's there. Um, but, but God has a reason for putting her in there. And that's to encourage people uh, who feel like they are too far gone or there's no hope for them. And they're too messed up. And no, 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 no. Like not only can I use you, but I love to use people in that position because it helps them understand that it's not about your, your, your uh, uh, performance. It's about your position. And uh, if you're a child of God, your position is always um, one of an incredible um, influence and opportunity. Yeah. So you have a new album out, came out in August called Restoration. Mm -hmm. When somebody sits down and listens to that start to finish, what do you want them to take away from it? Um, I, I just want people to be able to connect, relate, and and realize that this is not the end. Uh, you're never too far gone. Um, you can't out send the cross, and um, and they, there's always you know there, there's grace today for yesterday's mistakes. So we usually end our interviews at CCM with a message of hope, but I think today may be more important at a message of restoration. Is there something that you would mm -hmm. like to leave our viewers with that you feel is the most important part? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm just reminded of um, Jeremiah 29, 11. I think we all know it, right? I know the plans that I have for you, plans for future and hope, but we don't usually look at it in light of the whole chapter of Jeremiah 29. And God um, had his people in captivity. They were going to be in captivity for 70 years. And so they were concerned. And God is letting them know that, yes, you're going to have some pain, but that pain is coming with the promise. And so you can always hold on to the promise in the midst of the pain. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Um, he restores my soul, Psalm 23 says. And so there is always hope for restoration. There is always a, a better future ahead if we'll trust in him. There's always a promise that we can cling on to. He's not gonna leave us in despair. Um, so regardless of what you're experiencing or what you're going through, this, is a, this may be the worst chapter in your life, but it's not the end of the book. 
to just a chapter. That's right. That's right. Everyone, make sure that you go and pick up I Am Restored by Lecrae. It's available now in bookstores everywhere. Also, download, stream, restoration, and go to YouTube and watch the um, documentary that he has out right now. It's really important and really special, and you get to see a really cute 14-year-old Lecrae on there. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to see his wonderful, beautiful family. So Lecrae, thank you so much for taking time. I, I know out of your crazy busy schedule to talk with us at CCM and talk to our viewers and share your heart. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you as well. Absolutely.